you're listening to episode 58. 58, baby! Of Fresh Floppies! We did it! What's up to all our sidekicks and henchfolk out there in the Geek Nation? Every time I listen to these again, I can always hear the right before we go real loud, and it's 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 a, it's adorable. Yeah. It's absolutely adorable. You're uh, you're listening to Fresh Floppies. Fresh Floppies is a weekly comic book podcast where we re- review spoiler free mm. the books that are in stores today, Wednesday. July 3rd, the year of our Lord, 2024, whatever Lord. Yeah, whomstever Lords. Yeah, in the year yeah. of Satan. <laughs> uh, Isn't that a yeah. fake meat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I worship all proteins. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, especially those that are manufactured. Um, so we have a very, very big week of comics to talk about. Yeah, uh, lots of stuff is happening. However. Yep. We got letters. We have a letter. We got lots and lots, lots and, and lots, lots of and one lots of letter. letters. Uh, okay, this is from Christopher St. Saucy. Good night. Long time uh, fan of the show. Uh, hey, it's been a year and a half since Department of Truth 22 came out. So, I was sure surprised when they solicited issue 23 a few months ago. I think I had the same problems you had with the book. Too much setup, not enough payoff. Yeah. And honestly, with a book like that, it should be about 30 issues anyways. Part of Maybe, the, maybe it's the art. But it just didn't hold my attention long enough for me to keep track of what the hell is going on. (laughs) Which is a shame because the uh, premix is solid. The, what's he trying to say? Premise. Premise, that's the word, premise. Uh, Don't even get me started on Nice House on the Lake. Advertising it as a 12-issue miniseries only for nothing to be resolved and it ending with a cliffhanger to be picked up in a sequel? That did piss me off. (gasps) Not cool. Anyone remember Morning Glories? Yeah. Runaways meets Lost, the most anticipated new series of the year 2010. Of, of our Lord, Satan, <laughs> that went nowhere and again ended its 50th issue with a promise of more to come back in 2016. What happened, Nick Spencer? Chris Saint Saucy, good night. Um, Let's start at the top. I agree. Having only read one volume of Department of Truth, <laughs> 30 issues tops. Well, so, yes. Um, but the way the series is running the main storyline is only on like chapter 15 nah, nope, 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 nope. because they will go into like side quests or like backstory. So like the main, I think the main through line, the people that you meet at the very first issue, yeah. they're going to have close to a 30 something story. Arc, yeah. But I mean, it, it takes its time. Like there's a whole separate arc about cryptids and a whole separate mm-hmm. arc about that was just Lee Harvey Oswald. Uh, being recruited in a whole separate arc like they go a little out of i mean it's world building I, it, it look i i expressed my issues with the book last week the idea that like it it's really really interesting and then it just kind of navel gazes a little while and the mm-hmm. art is very vibey and ephemeral like, it's not really much to grab onto and then a really good cliffhanger or a really good start and you're like oh maybe i'm still on this book yeah it, it, yeah I don't know. My personal take on why I think it should be 30 issues, I'm, I'm just doing some self-discovery right this second, is the art for me is a chore to mm-hmm. look at. It is like it is not pleasant. Um, it makes my eyes do more work than my eyes should be doing. If this was drawn by another creator, maybe I wouldn't feel this way. Mm. Um, if, it, if it was easier to go through. But I do find it to be a bit of homework to read this book. As much as I like the story and the idea... Me sitting down and reading it is kind of like it's kind of unpleasant just because of the art. I'm trying to think of a really good analogy, and the one that keeps popping up is maybe jazz. Like mm. Martin Simmons' art, and it's not as good as jazz is mm-hmm. <laughs> just in general, but it requires you to invest a little bit more in it, yeah. and it's not always pleasing, and it's not always clear or concise or efficient. It's yeah. just a lot of noise at once. Yeah. And there's a, there's a there's a melody in there, but it's it requires you to give a little work to it. And yeah. I anybody that has a problem with that, I respect it. That's like, fine. You know, we talk about sitting in it. And yeah, that's a phrase that I use when I'm getting ready to read Helen of Windhorn by Tom King and Bill Keese Evely. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm gonna be sitting in it, but I'm gonna enjoy it. 
Yeah, so I'm going to be pouring through those Bill, Bill Keys panels. Washed over it. And Absolutely. this one is just like, I just can we get through this, please? <laughs> yeah, and, and I don't even understand his style. It's it's not, it's like it's almost collage. It's like Bill Sienkiewicz on more well, drugs. It's, it's like if it's like if Bill Sienkiewicz beat the shit out of uh, Alex Maleev. Yeah. And both of them refused to do backgrounds. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it's it's not bad, but it's so vibey. It's yeah. there's nothing for me to hold on to. Yeah. But then again, if you think about it at a metatextual level, probably the perfect art for the premise of the book. Right. Yeah. The yeah. fact that it's very ephemeral. There's nothing to really hold on to. What is the truth? What's not? Yeah. Perfect. It's just a chore. It looks, you know, the uh, it feels like reading a dream sequence, a nightmare sequence. Oh, uh, and that's in just in a book. You know what I mean? I, who is uh, iFanboy Flanagan? Yeah, Josh hates dream sequences. Yeah, same, I think I same. remember that from back in the day. From just night, like, nightmare. If uh, yeah, if uh, <laughs> if uh, if I turn the panel and and we find out it was all a dream, I'm throwing the book. Yeah, I'm throwing the book yeah, around yeah. across the room. <laughs> right yeah, out the window. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Oh, oh, so oh wait, we got more. Uh, uh, yeah, nice uh, house uh, nice on the lake. lake. Doesn't I, bother me. I, it would have been nice to have a nice wrap up at 12 issues, but when it was over, I was like, you know what? I, there's another one that I kind of sit in. But I enjoy the art is fine. Um, uh, that it, to me is... I like the premise. No, that to me is more of an issue of just um, calling your shot. Like, it was solicited as, and then the first five or six issues was 12-issue maxi-series, 12-issue maxi-series. And then after a while, they started saying, the first cycle. Yeah. And I was like, oh, so now I know that I'm not getting any closure here. Yeah. And I'm kind of pre-annoyed. And now that they've announced the next one, it's like, cool, I could just wait for all of it now. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't feel like there is... Um, an immediacy? Uh, no, not even an immediacy, just like a, um, a finite sense of closure when I, you know, invest in this story. Mm. And then somebody will be like, well, yeah, well, you read superhero comics. I know that there's not a finite end to the story. It is just constant visitations in a cycle. Mm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But if I was told, hey, Amazing Spider-Man is ending tomorrow, I'm expecting a f some sort of closure, some sort of finality, and then we go from there, not psych. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe that's why people get bitched about renumbering, but that doesn't bother me. I don't care. That doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. I mean, it bothers me a little bit. A little bit. Like one of the books uh, we're going to talk about today, hey. uh, Spider-Man Reign. That's right. I know it's six issues. If... Or five. I don't really know. I don't know how many you issues. You know it's a It's, a, mini, it's, it's a, a mini series. If at issue three they're like, now and ongoing. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. I didn't sign up for this. Yeah. yeah. I, I kind of, I, I like endings. The older yeah. I get, the more I'm liking endings. Yeah. I want to know where a, where a writer or an artist are going to land, not yeah. necessarily where they start from. And I, I think my other issue is there are so many books that get canceled before they even finish that I'm kind of happy for a book if it's doing so well that they're like, let's keep, let's, let's do a little bit more. You know, um, we've got a little bit more room to stretch. Um, Sometimes. Sure. I, I think those are two separate things, though. Yeah. If I'm making a finite maxi series and then it gets extended, that is not the same to me as a new ongoing. And then you find out it's actually just six issues. Yeah. Like that's, that's, that's one's pulling a rug. One's making you continue the race. Right. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think those are two different feelings. But I hear you. Yeah. We see shit canceled so much. And I think... She um, yeah. yeah. But apparently she knew. Yeah. Like, Rainbow Rowell knew that, you know, six months ago, we're only going to take it to ten. Um, but uh, I think it was maybe Brevoort or somebody at Marvel have addressed that problem. Mm -hmm. When they announce new series, they're at least going to give it ten. Oh, great. As opposed to things... Because oh. now with the new market, you're only seeing... Like, the first trade is out, the book's already canceled. Yes. So, it sounds like they're going to try and see... Or at least... Two trades. <laughs> well, no, at least factor in trade pre-sales yeah. to an ongoing longevity as opposed to... Okay. You know, yeah. it's all sold out. Uh, we've got to wrap this up. Uh, what, what about Nick Spencer? Where'd he go? What's he doing? Uh, he... He... <sighs> First of all, Morning Glories. I read it for like 15 issues, and then I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, I read it for one, and I was like, okay. <laughs> I think I was still writing for Broken Frontier, and I was reviewing it every week, ah. every month. Um, but Nick Spencer, he has done so much weird shit outside of con like I think he ran for office at one point. Um, oh. And then he was one of the founders 
I say that with air quotes, by the way, founders of that whole era of everyone on Substack and only doing, yes. like he was one of the very first ones and actually was hired by Substack to like launch the program oh, no and award the grants and stuff. Sure. Um, and then at the time he was doing 84 issues of Spider-Man at this, yeah. in a, a month. Yeah. Um, and then he just kind of disappeared. Disappeared. Yeah. I, he's got to be doing something. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's working on a project. Uh, you know what? Maybe, Maybe he's it's working on Morning, Morning Glories, Glories yeah. Volume 2. It's yeah. only eight years late. Phase 2, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into the books. Uh, yeah, let's start with the event. Speaking of a miniseries, one of four, this is Absolute Power. Miniseries? Uh, one of four. Event. Mini, mini this series is events. event. Yes. Um, chapter 1, Powerless by Mark Wade and our favorite, one of our favorites, Dan Mora. He's not a favorite. He's a champion. Oh. He's, he's the best. <laughs> okay. he's, he is, he's the best. He's so good. He's the best. Uh, what did you think of this um, event miniseries, part one? <clears throat> well, um, last week I did go back and read the uh, Ground Zero. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was useful. Yeah, I it was, thought so. It was all useful. Yeah. Um, I know both. Anthology both done us, right. Thumbs yeah. up. Ting. Both of us yeah. turned our noses up a little bit at an uh, anthology. Yeah. yeah, this was, I mean, this was great. I. Mark Wade knows how to structure a book. Yeah. Because even if I didn't care about the comings and goings of what transpires in this issue, or even if I didn't read all the other shit, I know exactly what's going on. I understand the stakes. Everyone's kind of placed. It's just it's just structured really, really strongly. Mm -hmm. um, nothing here blew me away, but it's like, it's a solid B plus. Yeah. And, oh, and then yeah. the art... It's a plus. Just, yeah. A plus. The art's fantastic. A plus plus. But yeah, this is like a this is like a really solid B plus. It's a strong first issue. Mm -hmm. There's the uh, the the first issue of any event usually has to end with like a smack in the face. Let's go. Yeah. This one wasn't really. It was obvious. Uh, as in, I mean, the whole thing's called absolute power, and the way that it's all set up, you kind of know what's going on, and then they just kind of confirm it. That's yeah. it. Um. But yeah, no, I, I really like this. What did you think? Uh, I thought it was great. Um, I'm trying to remember who has played Amanda Waller. I don't think, is, is it Viola Davis? Viola Davis, Angela Bassett. Uh, you mean ever? Yeah, just in live action. Viola Davis, Angela Bassett and Viola Davis. That's it. Because mm -hmm. um, the way he, the way Dan Moore draws her, she's got, he's got the, the heavy lidded look of, I think, Viola, Viola Davis, Davis. Yeah. Right? Um, it's not Viola Davis, but like the eyes, very Viola Davis. Anyway. Also the like, costuming. It's like the, it's, it's the James Gunn version, the, the kind yeah. of like middle management, no bullshit pencil skirt. Yeah. Blazer lady. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually, I love this book. This might be my favorite of the week. I, I was all in. I thought that, um, some of the stuff was kind of brutal. Uh, oh yeah. I, I didn't expect, I didn't, I know that Amanda Walla had a plan. Um, and I knew that she had, because we read issue zero, she had some cohorts that she's enlisted. Um, uh, it's, yeah, and I, I didn't expect some of this. I didn't know that some of this was coming, but it makes sense in hindsight. Like, oh, of course you would create those things to take on the Justice League. Who's, who's in them? So having read, having read the, Batman? uh, Bat well, we're going to talk about it next. Batman, yeah. the tie in, uh, the tie in issue of Batman. Um, who's in these, who's in these suits? Who's in these do you, do you What's think, in their heads? Do you th I, I was I thought they were like programs. I think it's something else. Oh, because they all talk different. Yeah, because Batman makes note of okay, an that's an accent. That's yeah. you're speaking like this. Yeah, um, but you're clearly something. Else. So like this. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm digging it. I think it's probably some. I think I know what it is, and I think it's something that was probably seated already. But I'm just yeah. waiting for the the story to. Ref that's something else that I've learned in my older age. I don't try and overthink or outthink the story. Right. When I'm watching, even with movies, like I remember when we went and saw, this is something I had to like think about. I was, I was watching Quiet Place um, with my wife this first time we saw it. And she was like, do you think, do you think? And I was like, I'm actually just waiting for the movie to tell me. Yeah. I, I don't, I mean, I could probably sit here and guess and guess correctly who is going to die and who's not. But I kind of don't care. I'm just, I've I'm just, always been that way. I'm just waiting for the... I, just want I don't know. You know what? No, like with like uh, whodunits. Yeah. 
you try sure. and overthink it, but yeah. I stopped doing that too. Like I don't care who the killer is in Scream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. It'll be I'm, one of those. Well, I'm not, especially Scream. I'm not thinking about it. I don't care. Scream. Just, it let's feels go. like they're just like throwing a dart at a post-it with a name. And be yeah, like, that'll like, be the killer. I'm, yeah, but I think people, other people, will find that like find that hunt enjoyable. I'm just yeah. like. Let the movie do the work. Let yeah. the comic do the work. I'm, yeah. I could probably guess exactly what's going to happen, but I'm just like, you know, that's just fine. enjoying it. Just yeah. passive. But yeah, some of these, some of these, um, what the fuck is up with Green Arrow? Some yeah, of these, um, I went back to read Green Arrow from last week because I was curious. Did you learn anything? I didn't finish it. Oh, good. Oh, well, I guess, so no. So no, not yet. <laughs> yeah, this is. And also I, the end. I thought that was a good. You saw that oh, cliffhanger yeah, coming? Yeah, no. Yeah. No, I yeah. didn't see this cliffhanger didn't see coming, that coming at all. Coming it was more along the lines of like the plan. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, what are they doing with that? I don't know. Uh, anyway, this is a this is a great book. Yeah, yeah, uh, this is a fresh AF for me. Fresh AF. Yeah. And, uh, how did you feel about the, the Batman tie-in? tie-in? Batman number one fifty, written by Chip Zdarsky with art by Jorge Jimenez, Dennis Cowan, and Mike Hawthorne. Well, I'll tell you, I thought that the tie-in portion of it was cool. Um, <laughs> that is the last maybe ten pages of the issue. The entire, the majority, the seventy-five percent of this issue is. It's a yeah, it's a double book. It's a, a book that would, it would be a story that would be in... Urban Legends. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or Brave it and is Bold. A or evergreen, here's a story about Batman and how a, a crook doing stuff. Yeah. Um, which, it was good. I yeah. enjoyed the way, especially the way it wrapped up. I really liked it. It's pretty strong. But I picked up the book because I wanted to see about absolute power. Um, and I like the absolute power a bit. Enough. Yeah. This is, what do they, what do they call them? Like drawer stories or something what's the yeah. terminology for it where it's like you got a story in the drawer Just, um it's yeah, for a, something it's for a fill-in it's for an anthology it's it's yeah. it's already paid for blah 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 i think drawer story is it yeah um that's what this was yeah yeah this yeah. was a this was a one shot that had a little tack on at the end mm-hmm. of absolute power um at the end at the beginning it's before absolute power oh no no, no. at the end of this book there's a tack on Attacked oh. on absolute power. Tie in. Tie in. Yes. Um, which, I mean, it takes place in the in the raindrops of absolute power. Like mm-hmm. it starts it starts at the beginning, but then the events of absolute power kind of happen in between some of these scenes. Yeah. Um, um, the artist Mike Hawthorne is fine. It gets the job done, but uh, you know what I think the problem with Mike Hawthorne. Uh, okay, th- wrong words, but still, like the issue with Mike Hawthorne on this book is he is the f- official fill-in artist for Jorge Jimenez, mm-hmm. and they look stylistically nothing alike, right? At all. Yep. So when you are reading this in issues, it is a knee-jerk reaction of like, Muh. Yeah. and I, I hate that they do that, where they will take like a fill-in artist who's probably great on their own mm-hmm. and juxtapose them with a completely different style and or vibe or, yeah. or kind of kineticism. And it just kind of, because I, to me, it's not about how good or, or not good Matt Hoth or Mike Hawthorne is. Yeah. It's about how much it does not stylistically match with the tone of this book that was established in the first arc. Yep. Yeah, I agree. So it was fine. I don't, it, uh, you don't need it. <laughs> yeah. As far as absolute power, if you're like, I want to read the main, but I don't know no. what tie-ins to read. Absolute power, Batman, not so much. Absolutely superfluous. Yeah, ah, that was oh. fresh enough. Fresh enough is fine. Um, well, I'm going to talk about a book that I re- You know what? I'll talk about... I want to talk about two books that I read. Mm. One book that I read, but it's two books that I read. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Radiant Black, issue number 29 and 29.5. 29 is written by Kyle Higgins and Joe Clark with art by Eduardo Ferragato. 29.5... Written by Kyle Higgins and Joe Clark, with art by Marcelo Costa. So Marcelo Costa is the more the the current or the the main artist yeah. on Radiant Black. At issue twenty five, um, you know how comics will do alternate universe stories. Yeah. Um, as far as I know, this is the first time, at least in modern comics, that I've seen them do the alternate story at the same time as the current story Mm -hmm. to the point where both are current but one's alternate so every month or every other month they've been coming up a little less uh there's two issues of this book 29 and 29.5 they are to be read in that order even though they go on their own thing and it started at 25 this is cool as fuck i don't such a good idea i don't know i 
I still don't get everything yeah. because we're talking about like so the Catalyst War started, um, where the radiance uh, came from is now being revealed in slow like small alien ways, um, and we've set it up to where in order to save Earth, um, the radiant black or the radiance themselves have to complete three tests, three challenges. If they win, they can save the Earth. If they don't, the Earth will just be assimilated into the Catalyst and go. Hmm. And you're seeing, uh, if you've been reading the book, there are, the Radiant Black is shared by two characters, yeah. uh, Marshall and Nathan. If you're reading the, <laughs> Marshall and Nathan, they have to make a choice who, because the, the, there has to be a primary Radiant Black in order to do these. And then we kind of see both. Yeah. We get to see both characters like, oh, do here, their own versions of it. Here's the reality where Nathan has it. Here's the reality where. And I got to say, both. Yeah. Both storylines, both like versions, have moments where you're like, "Yeah, Marshall should have it," yeah. and then he fucks up royally, and something bad happens. Yep, Nathan should have it, yeah. and then he fucks up royally, and something should have it. Uh, uh, like both of them are given the same weight to the point where I don't even know what Kyle Higgins wants. Yeah, yeah. In this Which book, way he's leaning. Yeah. yeah, it's just so well done. Um, and then this is twenty nine, twenty nine point five. 30, I think, is the last one, is the, the end of it. Uh-huh. And I still don't know... Who you want? Who I want or what's okay, going to happen. cool. Um, or yes. even how they're going to wrap this up, because this is the this is the issue where it gets even messier. So okay. this is such a good fucking book. That's so cool. This book and, Ra- and Rogue Son, both of these... Uh, what Massiverse? are they called? Massiverse. Both of these Massiverse books... They keep doing stuff where I keep wondering or questioning, how are you going to collect this? Yeah. Because the I last issue... I was just thinking about this one, yeah. How would they do that? This one, they're just collecting them as they're coming out. So, like, okay. the, the Catalyst War will be two trades, and it's okay. just, like, 25, 26, 26, 5, 26, and then, yeah. Great. Um, but Rogue Sun, they've done... So, the last issue was... Was it called a palindrome? Where the, st- the yes, end in the... palindrome, yeah. The end in the beginning start the same way, and they meet in the middle... It was that with um, there's two care like the the way that works out is like there's a spirit in the suit that's instructing the kid. For one whole half of the story, you're getting that voiceover, and then it's blocking dialogue, and then the other half you're getting the dialogue and a different voiceover, and they merge in the middle. And then they did a they did a um, they did an issue of um, uh, choose your own adventure. Ah, how do you collect that? Yeah, like so like when we talk about books that are better in issues or trades the massive verse shit is just better in issues because it's just such a cool journey that's awesome um you read something that i did not read i've been on a star wars kick of late i've been reading quick kick in star wars charles soul uh run on star wars which is like um what was it the war of the bounty hunters Mm -hmm. and then crimson rain and then hidden empire and then i went back and read some darth vader by i said greg pack um, yes. So I've just been I've just been in Star Wars uh, and Star Wars Inquisitors number one by Rodney Barnes and Ramon Rosanas with uh, colors by Guru EFX. Um, do you know you know who the Inquisitors are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're basically appointed by um, Emperor Palpatine after Order sixty six to go track down the Jedi that survived. Um, and we are introduced to a brand new legendary Jedi who's of, like, Luke status, sort of. Like, he is climbing the ranks of legend um, just from the things that he's doing and the people that he's helping and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and so that means that the Grand Inquisitor um, is, is tracking him down. Uh, this Jedi's name is Tensu Run, and um, this is really solid. Uh, I really am interested in these Inquisitors because I don't know too much about them. So it takes place... During, after the, after where does, episode three. After, yeah, okay. Yeah. In between, like the rise of the empire. Yes. All right. Yeah, like um, right after Order 66. Okay. Yeah. Um, I get confused sometimes with the timelines. Yeah, they jump around. Mm. Um, but yeah, this is solid. I will say that Tensu Run, the Jedi, um, who is drawn to look like, um, how about them apples? How do you like them apples? Well, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. He's drawn to look I, like Matt Damon. I, see, I never tend to agree with you about this stuff. I want to see. 
Um, so oh, it's Matt Damon. Ra- <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt Damon. Hey, What's Matty? up, Matty D? Oh. Uh, yeah, they, he's specifically. And you know what? That is like if Who's Salvador La Roca I was going to say. What, effort. What is, like, like this is a true stuff. Salvador La Roca's better student? Yes. Yeah, he's, yeah. This is actually what Salvador La Roca used to look like. Oh, before like he, before he did whatever he's doing now. Tracing. This is this is um this is like uh, Invincible Iron Man, Salvador La Roca, uh, but better I think. Um, oh, yeah. I think oh, he's strong. The, this artist is stronger. The digital sure. coloring isn't as egregious. Um, so yeah, this is just fun. If you're into the Inquisitors, if you like Star Wars, you should definitely jump in on this one. I genuinely thought this was gonna be like an anthology book or something, and I'm glad it's not. This yeah, is cool. it's just a story. Hey, this um, this Art Adams cover is so good. It's though. so dope. Yeah, man, Ugh. I love Art Adams. Um, but uh, yeah, I will. The, my my one caveat is not caveat, but my one issue is that Tensu Run talks like a. I don't I don't know what to call it. Like it, it's so flowery. Um, he talks like an like a like a ninety year old Jedi, but he's drawn to look like Matt Damon. Yeah, you, know, you would expect um, a much somewhat on the Jedi Council to talk like this, or Yoda. To like pontificate about, it, you know, but how old is he supposed to be? Hey, Matt Damon, young Matt Damon. I'd say he's in his like late twenties, early thirties. Uh, I mean, if he was trained as a Jedi, that means he's got no streets or like some like school smarts, just no just, book, just book learning. Yeah, no Riz, yeah. logged out. Um, yeah. yeah that, uh, I believe we are doing this the wrong way. We flee the Inquisitors. He sounds like no he, more. He, he sounds like he needs a wedgie. He talks like a comic book. You know I mean? <laughs> he needs a wedgie. Yeah, he needs a flush. He needs to get uh, get flushed. Um, so, pretty fresh. I'm gonna I'm gonna preamble this. Okay. Because I want to talk about a book that I read you did not. There's, there are certain comic creators that I am not a giant fan of mm. for no particular reason other than I've never really grabbed me or blah 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 and. I will sometimes see like something they're on and like, oh, is it good? Uh, no, I don't really want to read that. Yeah. But oftentimes there's a reason why they're getting work constantly. Yeah. yeah. And maybe it just hasn't clicked yet. I had that relationship with Kieran Gillen before. Like I used sure. to hate his shit. Yeah. And it was just so smack in the face and didn't yeah. now. Tom it's, King for me. Now I dig it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wouldn't go that far with this. But one of those people for me is Steve Orlando. Yeah, same. He's not for me. Always gainfully employed. I have sampled his work over and over again, and I think only once have I kind of enjoyed it, and that was like a an OGN he did Kill with a man. An, yeah, an yeah. OGN he did with another writer. Yeah. Uh, so it's I'll like see. maybe yeah. yeah. But uh, he he uh, his new book came out today, Annihilation twenty ninety nine. Uh, it's written by him, Steve Orlando, with art by Ibrahim. Robertson and Dale Eaglesham. Oh, wow! Uh, I I love Annihilation. I'm a sucker for Annihilation yeah. Conquest. I love Nova. I love all the idea of it. I don't care about 2099. No. Um, and I'm a Spidey guy. I still don't care about Spider-Man 2099. But then I really like Ibrahim Robertson. I I I remember loving Dale Eaglesham. Mm-hmm. Where's he been? Yeah, JSA, right? Yeah. Yeah. JSA Charles. and uh, he did FF with. Hickman too That's right. at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, Very bulky folks. <laughs> yeah, I don't, there's something aesthetically yeah. pleasing about it as long as it's colored well, yeah. right? Um, so I decided to give this a shot, and I kind of liked it. <laughs> <laughs> All that for yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay. It's, I, well, no, it's it's, fine. it's it's stronger than it needs to be. There is there's a there's a it's it's set up in two different stories. It's the last Nova. And then a backup of Dracula 2099. Oh, Dracula Risen. Yeah. The last Nova story has a beat in it that I feel stupid for not guessing. I'm, okay, I'm sorry. Just going to interrupt you for a second. Yeah, yeah. When someone introduces themselves and the letterer, the letterist, letterer um, uses their logo. I'm in. Yeah. Of Dracula. Did yeah. you say tomb? No, body of Dracula. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the Tomb of Dracula logo. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, there's a <laughs> there's a reveal in the in the first story, which I don't want you to. Well, I mean, you could spoil it if you want okay. to. It's fine. But um, there was it was actually pretty strong, and I kind of dug it. Um, there are still some dialogue things that I don't really care for too much. Like it's yeah. it, it's written over expository. Um, it, 
there's a sense of maybe a lack of I wouldn't I don't know if it's confidence or or trust in the reader to just kind of go along without needing to know every bit or detail. Yeah. Um cuz all I really need to know is like this is the guy I'm rooting for. He's got damage. Let's go. But there's a couple of scenes where it's like there's a it's 2099 and it's out in space. Yeah. There is a wild west looking gang of symbiote things and they say like, you know, we're we're no gang. Yeah, oh, I see. I yeah. know what that is. Yeah. I don't necessarily need a flashback of where they got the symbiote to blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, I see. do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. you just 20% a little less. Mm -hmm. But overall, it's probably my favorite Steve Orlando thing I've ever read. Oh, great. At this point, sure. um, because the reveal in the first half, in the Nova half, really did surprise the shit out of me. Oh, wow. and I And I liked it. Oh, also, Ibram Roberson's art is friggin' awesome. Oh. He is like... He's a couple years away from Chichetto. Wah. Yeah. Okay. So good. Nice. Um, but yeah, no, this was fun. And then the backup story was just was fine. It was Dracula being Dracula, in in space, in the I future. Know. Okay. Uh, apparent, but this is such a weird story. Annihilation twenty ninety nine. It's five issues, but each issue is different twenty ninety nine cosmic characters. Oh uh, yeah. So. It almost feels like, is this supposed to be like an annual style event? Because they did this last year with Spider-Man. Or maybe it was even more recently. I think it was more recently than that. It was like four-issue miniseries. It was like, Spider-Man meets Frankenstein. 2099. 2099 Spider-Man meets Dracula. Yeah. But the thing is, like, I, I kind of just want to continue that Nova with story. Nova. Yeah. I And I'm. it's not clear to me if the next issue is going to continue that because right. it's Star-Lord 2099 and Quasar 2099. Maybe so, they'll all come together. Sure. Yeah. It's less engaging to me. Like, I don't know. I'll try the next one. We'll see. But maybe, this they're, was, maybe they're building 2099 Guardians. Right? With Dracula? Well, I, no, I just mean with um, oh, Star-Lord. There's a Silver Surfer in there and a yeah. Blastar. Maybe. We'll see. Um, either way, uh, this is stronger than I thought it would be. It's pretty solid. If you do not have that same kind of baggage, you might love it even more. Okay. And I'll, uh, off mic, I'll spoil the ending for you. It's actually pretty cool. Nice. What's next? Um, I think we have to rain, rain it in. Hey! With Spider-Man Rain 2 by Kare Andrews. Uh, what did you think of Spider-Man Rain? I thought it was... Uh, I thought it was an interesting experiment. Yeah. Because it's very clearly, right there on the paper, Dark Knight Returns for Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, he even draws the, um, the newscasters, I believe... To look like the newscasters from it's been a while Dark since I revisited Returns. it, but yeah, that sounds right. Um, and it's Peter in the far future, old as hell, um, having had a couple of a couple of gnarly revelations, um, yeah. which really stuck with me. Have stuck with me for what fifteen years, ten years, however long it's been. Yeah, um, um, the Doc Ock scene. Where it's like Doc Ock's arms are still sentient and lugging around his oh, skeleton corpse. That's right. Yeah. Um, it awesome. There's more. There's more good. There's exponentially more good in Spider-Man Reign than there is bad. It is. It yeah. is a weird story. What though. happened to MJ? A lot of people make fun of that. They make it a joke. But like Actually, to me, when I read that, I was like, "Holy shit!" If you that's are that's awful. If you if you, as a person, if you're completely irradiated, whoever's near you at all times yeah. is going to slowly. Get a radiator. Get poisoned. Yeah. yeah. You've got radioactive blood, blood. Um, so, yeah, uh, I thought it was fun. Um, I think it sort of got a little heavy at the end, like a little uh, too big for its britches at the end. I, I think really... heady is the word you're heady. looking for. Heady, that's the yeah, word. Yeah, because um, it, it does get – and honestly, that was my – speaking of uh, segueing into this issue, that was my first thought of this. Like the whole first, 15, first half of this book um, is – really big ideas very heady yeah. and there's no grounding until maybe the halfway through when we finally get peter in the real world so speaking of dark knight returns dark knight strikes again similar thing um someone is trapped a cat girl shows up to get him out of that thing <laughs> and then leads him away while fighting so it's like uh what was it it was um uh, what was her name carrie uh from who was robin yeah becomes Carrie I Kelly. Mean, she becomes like a version of Catwoman. Yeah, like Catwoman or Catgirl or something. Something like that. And then saves um, the Atom. Yeah. And then they're fighting their way out. Um, but yeah, the, basically we've got Peter in the Matrix and she helps him get out. And I, then more stuff happens. What's What's creepier about it though is he's in 
he seems to be in there at his own volition. Yeah, man. He's yeah. I want to die in this. Yeah, I don't want to be out here. He's he's um, C- Cipher. What was his name? Yeah, it was Cipher. Uh, the guy from it was Joey Pants, <laughs> who likes to be in the Matrix. Um, so yeah. Um, what did you think though? Did you enjoy this? I did. Um, I did enjoy it. Uh, I think for a first issue of a sequel, it ups the stakes. I so I don't. It's weird. I didn't love the first half of this book seemed like it was going out of its way to just negate the events of the first one. Yeah. Which it did. Yeah. But then there's a third act reveal that's like, oh, it's a different book. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and now I'm in. If it was just going to be like a for the sake of telling another story, we're going to negate everything as opposed mm-hmm. to what are we going to do next? So like the first half, I was a little not peeved, just like, okay, I guess. Yeah. Feels a little too cash grabby. And then when that kind of reveal happens and, you know, the cliffhanger for the yeah. third act, I'm like, yeah. oh, oh, okay. Okay. I like yeah. this. Yeah. I'm, same, I'm done same. with this. The this same is cool. reaction. Yeah. Because I don't care about, you know, there are certain um, futuristic stories that I'm like, oh, I want to be in this future a little bit more. I don't care about this future at all. Also, is that any of that actually real? Yeah. I think so. I mean, good. Do you, I, don't know. I was gonna say, like, do you really know. think that all of that actually happened outside of Manhattan and it's real? Oh no! I don't I'm think sorry. that's real. The story that's being told, no. Yeah, I don't, I think, don't think it's think real so. at all. Yeah. Although, all those people. I'll so spoil it. But um, yeah. we don't know what's outside that's there. That's true. That's yeah. true. Um, yeah, no. This was. I think this was. If <laughs> I don't know, I, can you just pick this up without reading Rain? Nah, I wouldn't. Actually, I think you could. Yeah, but you could. Yeah. But I wouldn't. I would, I would go read. And the good thing is, is that Spider-Man Reign is back in print. You can grab a trade paperback of it. So, yeah, I would read Spider-Man Reign. Yeah, there is some stuff in here that is just, like, so Frank Miller coded. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. I like Carrie Andrews. Do you like Carrie Andrews? Oh, I love Carrie Andrews. Um, he did a he did a miniseries uh, a year or two ago, um, Amazing Fantasy, Amazing Stories. Oh, yeah. Fantasy. Yeah, Amazing Fantasy. It was great. Something like that. It was really, really good. Um, it's basically just, like, Adventures in the Afterlife and... Peter in the Savage Land with Ben. Yeah. And so, like, it was just cool. It was really, really cool. I um, like that he has like nine different styles. And if yeah. you didn't know it was the same dude, you wouldn't know. You, you would think it was different artists. Um, let's end the show in uh, visiting Energon Corner. Yes. Energon Universe, uh, Scarlet Number Two, Kelly Thompson, Marco Ferrari, and Lee Luridge. Lowfridge? Lo- Lo- Lofridge. Lofridge. Lufrage. With letterer Russ Wooten, covers, a variant covers by Carl Kershaw, Gleb Melnikov, Paolo Rivera, and Amy Wu. Um, I'm going to start off by saying I don't think uh, an exact, an, a, a razor blade works like that. Huh? The razor blade. I don't think it would just sit in there. But uh, um, Well, I know that that's an actual tactic that people use in renditions, so I'm not going to question it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, also, it's G.I. Joe, so what the fuck? Is it like, <laughs> that's, that's a, that, that, did, that did not come from her. That's a real thing. Oh, okay. Having it kind of like in the middle of the tissue, flat. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's. I mean, it's not pleasant, but yeah. I don't think Kelly Thompson just came up with that whole cloth. That's like a. That's like an actual thing. Um, but otherwise, this is um, fresh enough. I really like the first issue, and I think this issue is fine. Um, but I wasn't like, oh, it was issue three, let's go! Oh, I think this was actually better than the first issue, and I loved it. Also, I... I love... Speaking I, of being coded, oh, uh, yeah. our, our discussion about her, her friend from the last one... I think at this you point don't you don't think spoil they're, it. They're gay. Like, they, look at the way they're holding each other. Yeah. Like, they love each other. I, I think so, too. They're a couple. They're talking... Yeah, it's... like It is... Uh, Scarlet Jinx. and Jinx are yeah. very... It is queer-coded. Yeah. Um, And I almost I almost want this still to kind of be a reveal at the end that, like, eh, maybe they're bisexual. That's fine. Yeah. But, like, there is... The way they're talking, it's a platonic love. Yeah. The way it's depicted... Yeah. It is flirtation. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's what, I, that's what so I'm thinking. So I'm of. like, I mean, I would be cool with either way, but it, 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 I'm, honestly, I would I would probably be more cool with, like, they are in love. Just and say that's it. great. Yeah, yeah just say yeah. it. But I want to – so um, Marco Ferrari, there's a couple fight sequences in here that I thought were awesome. 
absolutely really? awesome. Yeah, like um, her flipping the chair and kicking it. There's um, uh, there is a sequence here where she takes out like five guys, and you can see her jump in and out of panel, and then just bodies piling up behind her, mm -hmm. jumping off the wall. I, and then. The reaction shot of Storm Shadow with yeah. the bloody footprints. That, that I loved. There is so much. That I loved. There is so much, um, dare I say, originality in yeah. some of these layouts that I, any kind of like small blocking faux pas, yeah. immediately forgiven because there's, there, like, they got, this artist has sauce. This panel to this panel, love it. Yeah. The and extra this body falling. This panel to this panel, love it. I do just wish that the it was a little tighter. The, the, it was a, it's a little loose. Oh, I um, I hear that, but the the looseness kind of gives it a fluidity that I enjoy. Yeah, I can see that. Um, when it needs to slow down, the book slows down. Like her mm -hmm. setting up, her setting up for the heist at the end. Like yeah. the book does slow down and gives you much more um, fidelity. But mm -hmm. when it's when it's you know ninja fighting, yeah. it is it is fluid. It is loose. It's a little wild, and I kind of love it. And there is full sequences here with absolutely no dialogue, just mm -hmm. action. Yeah. When an artist and a writer can, like, do that well, it makes me giddy inside. Yeah, yeah. 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 I like this book a lot. I think it's better than it's better than Destro. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. it's, I haven't it's made my decision yet. It's beaten Destro so far with me. Uh, we'll see how issue two goes. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, what are you looking forward to the rest of this week? Oh, man. Because I'll tell you what uh, I'll be doing. I am going to be pouring over this Chris Somney's Black Widow Artist Edition that I bought. <laughs> that is 11 by 17 hardcover with spot varnish and no lettering. And it's just Chris Somney's yeah. pages scanned in high res. It's, you can see where, like, the pencil's underneath. You can see the whiteout that he uses. I'm a sucker for that type of shit. It's pretty beautiful. I, I don't usually buy the Artist Edition as much as I would love to. But for Chris Somney, I made a, an exception. Uh, if Marvel's listening, and I know they are, because... Mm -hmm. What else would they be doing? Yeah, I know. It's, With their time. All viewership is probably Marvel employees. If you could, <laughs> just do me a favor and release a Mark Wade Chris Somney omnibus that includes uh -huh. their Black Widow run mm -hmm. and their Captain America run. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you want to call it? We call it something like... Uh, Mark Wade's Marvel. Ma yeah, the Marvel Universe by Mark Wade they and Chris that Somney. With Frank yeah, just something, man. Because yeah. those are two amazing short runs i think both of them are only like 12, 12 issues, issues 12 to 13 issues yeah. that would just they go beautiful together yeah. do it do it do it do it um all right oh tonight no yeah tonight yeah, tonight what are we talking about tonight uh tonight we're going to be talking about the nasty oh a graphic novel yes it's a, a horror graphic a new novel. a new uh a, a, a newly collected um comic book series that came out last year about horror about the video nasties yeah, of the 80s into the 90s over in britain horror Basically, comic about horror uh laws were passed um uh, regarding home movies you know you can, apparently there are movies that you could watch in the theater but Be then as soon as it's on vhs it, the stuff has to be edited out and you're not allowed to watch it at home yeah if that sounds cool to you uh you need check to join us tonight yeah Oh, yeah, uh, and also join us. <laughs> yeah, don't check. To, join us and then check it out. Yeah, yeah what's going on here? <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us, and we'll talk at you later. Do, 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 do. Thank you for listening to the Cult Pop Network, home to podcasts, live shows, and a whole lot of fun stuff for every flavor of fan. Follow us wherever you find your favorite podcasts, and be sure to join us live every Wednesday night at youtube.com backslash cultpopgo at 8 p.m. Eastern. While you're there, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you'll know when we drop new Thunder Rounds and episodes of Fresh Floppies, a spoiler-free show about single-issue comics released each week. Until then, we'll talk at you later.